So as I was saying, the damsel's been pushed off the balcony of the 32nd floor again. She's hurtling. Ah! That's her. And so then he comes in, he swoops in and he grabs her. But from a physics perspective, yes. Charles, what would really happen? Well, the problem is, of course, if Superman is a man of steel mm. and the oh. thing is coming down, right? And you're coming up with the steel. It's like hitting the concrete ground, right? So the poor damsel in distress would be quite rescued, but also quite squished. So quite so dead. Basically, yeah, well, he yeah. kills her. Yeah. yeah. This is... She's a bug on a windshield. Well, the problem is, of course, that moment of impact, right. right? And so it has been hypothesized that Superman actually has a way to absorb motion. In other words, the momentum and the energy, he actually not only can get there and stop the person from hitting the ground, but also can absorb the impact so that he himself, who is invulnerable, is unharmed, but the person who is falling is also unharmed It's because it's as if they had fallen and just stopped in midair. Hmm. So it's like airbags. Like airbags. Okay, so Quantum but that's, that's Superman, Superman flying up. Airbags. He wouldn't have to do that. He could just wait until they fall. But typically, you see Superman flying horizontally. So that's quite a calculation to fly horizontally and perfectly intersect yes. when the person is where you are. Yes, Superman's brain has to be at least as good as your average computer. Right. Right. So Superman, I, he's everything about him is super. Yes. Right. And well, I wondered. We actually got a question. A branch of our podcast that goes online are questions open to the public, our fan base. And one of them just simply asked, would Superman's physiology be the same as humans, even if he's sort of steel on the outside? And it got me thinking, if he's got super everything, mm -hmm. but he does eat food, we've seen him eat. Right. So the food would be digested in some super way, perhaps. Okay, so what would that mean? And then I thought, so everything that's going on in you would happen in a super way in Superman. So it would digest faster, the, it goes into your intestines, and a lot of the action is in your lower intestines mm -hmm. where the, the microbial action happens anaerobically. Uh-oh. Here we go. <laughs> no, and, um, and anaerobic gases. Uh-huh. Methane, Me sulfur compounds. Yeah, sulf yeah sulf mm -hmm. super taco Tuesday. Yeah, so uh, hydrogen sulfide. That's the smell of rotten eggs. You have a methane, which I didn't know this when I was in camp when I was 10, but the, the, my fellow campers were right when they said, have you ever ignited? Yeah. That yeah. thing which I mean, must we not can, be ignited. Come on. I mean, I know we're in the Hamptons, but everybody knows what a fart is. Come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> No, but so, okay, so fine. So, no, so, so you can ask, what is the gaseous composition of that? Okay. And in Superman, it would be super, right? All and right. methane, of course, is highly flammable. Yes. And in cities, it's the gas of choice for your stove if you still have a gas stove. Suburbs tend to have propane. These are varieties of flammable gases that you get from crude oil. So, so methane mm -hmm. is flammable. Yes. So, so it occurred to me that this is another tool Superman would have <laughs> in crime fighting. Because, because cause he, he would just sort of <laughs> load it up, okay? <laughs> then I'm pointing roll at down me. his pants and just let one out. And he's got the vision. Laser vision. Laser vision. X-ray vision. Then, then he, but no, we can get to x-rays yet. All right. He's got, he, can, he got he laser vision. Laser vision. He could just ignite it, and so it would be a new kind of flamethrower. Oh, what a terrible death for those villains. No, no, that would be a, it's, it's, it's physiological. Yeah. It's. It works. I, I think it would work. Yeah. You could never sneak up on Superman with kryptonite. Why? Because there'd be a rear guard defense. Oh, yes. Yes, you couldn't get close enough. Couldn't take him from behind. It yeah. literally would be a fireball. Yes, yes yeah. fireball. The, the only problem with this very reasonable reasoning is that when Superman came to the world from Krypton, mm -hmm. he did not have gut bacteria yet. He was still like pre-colonoscopy. Okay? <laughs> so any gut bacteria he has achieved from eating here on Earth has come from Earth. So this is a fascinating question, which I would love for your opinions, okay? 
does Superman have super gut bacteria or just ordinary gut bacteria? In oh. which case, right, if he has super digestion, which you said earlier, which yeah. would be great, it might be so good as to eliminate all gaseous emission, in which case Superman never passes gas. Oh. All right. So Superman has x-ray vision. All right. right? Yeah. There's a scene in one of the movies where Lois Lane walks behind a lead planter because he asks, well, if you have x-ray vision in, in her first interview, uh, then what color panties am I wearing? And he says, I, I don't know. And he says, well, why? Oh, because you're standing behind a lead planter. Because everyone knows lead absorbs, uh, x-rays. absorbs x-rays. And then she steps out and then he says pink or red or something. But x-rays should not be able to tell color of clothing. That's right. Ah, right? it's true. It would just go through the clothing. That's right. Right. All right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not accepting poetic license, are you? Not at all. No, no. no. <laughs> right. Okay. If you're going to use X-rays, then stay in the X-ray world. Otherwise, invent N-rays or something. Invent some other rays that he had. If you're going to stay X-rays, you better stick with what we know. So what you want is an upgrade for Superman, just X-ray vision, and then a whole load of different right. dial-up vision that, would that he be could interesting. use. See? See, they didn't think of that. Well, if you think about... Got a X whole alphabet. That's right. Yeah. Y-rays, Z-rays. Z-rays, yeah, yeah. Omega rays, yes. Well, X-rays, as many of you know... Uh, they go right through our bodies, right? And they go through different materials and wind up with different colors. For example, our bones look different from our soft tissues and things like that. X-ray telescopes that we're familiar with, the Chandra X-ray Observatory, XMM Newton, things like that, they can look at the X-rays, but X-rays are also different colors. Some of them are what we call hard X-rays. Some of them are soft X-rays. And in the same way that we can take pictures in red, green, and blue and then mix them together to form a color photo, Superman could be able to detect or even emit x-rays and come back and forth in these different bands and thus create a three-color image. This is an undeveloped feature he could have expressed. That's right. This is a, an evolutionary superiority that he has. But instead of us having rod and cone cells, he has some sort of x-ray rod and cone cells that so allows him to So we are limited color. to just the visible spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Yes. He's got x-rays as a whole accessible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. That's right. And all he does is just see through walls with it. Yes. But it's way more useful. Highly well, underdeveloped. Man, he's modest, man. You know what I mean? He probably could do all that, but he just doesn't want to let you know unless you're asking him about your panties. <laughs> <laughs> now, this thing about his, his gut. Yes. Um, we know Superman came here as an infant. Yes. So I once got a phone call from DC Comics Ooh. in my office. You're in trouble. Oh, I, I work at the Hayden Planetarium, in case anybody was dragged here by the person next to you and doesn't know anything else about me. That's where I work. And I don't know, uh, 10, 15 years ago, I got a phone call. Hello, is this Dr. Eisen? I said, yes. This is DC Comics. Well, can we ask you some questions? I said, sure. We have a new comic book we're illustrating, and we want to know if we can illustrate Superman visiting the Hayden Planetarium. Will you give permission for this? Yeah, I mean, wh wh who's gonna say no to that, right? So I said, what's up? And they said, oh, Superman, in this, in this story that they're telling, is gonna come to the planetarium to use our special tools of visualization and telescopes and things to see the destruction of Krypton, which is finally reaching Earth. Mm. And I said, ooh, that's good. That's good. But I had, to, I, had to, I, I had to dig in. And I said, all right, Superman was launched Moses style in a basket as an infant, arrived on Earth in that same basket as an infant. And anyone who knows infants knows that a month, two months, you know the difference between the baby who's two months old and with the three months old. This baby did not age. So there's only two ways, I'm telling this guy on the phone, <laughs> only two ways, and he's taking notes, right? He didn't argue with anything I was telling him. I said the two ways it could have gotten here. If he traveled, because they're aliens, so they could do what they want. If he traveled the speed of light to Earth, he would not age relative to Earth, because that's Einstein's relativity. However, if he's traveling the speed of light, so is the destruction of Krypton. That light, those light beams from the destruction would be right alongside him and he'd land on Earth 
You'd see Krypton destroyed. He couldn't show up later and then observe the event. So, I, so you can't, it can't, you, it can't be the speed of light. It was so at I this said, point the gentleman from DC Comics knew that he had made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so then I said, the only way you can get him here and have all his work is through a wormhole. Okay, a wormhole. They put him through a wormhole. He gets here instantly, long before the light beam. Okay, that's that's really that's very cool, man. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I told to him. be honest, that's really cool. Okay, so now, hang on. So then I said, Yeah, hang on. <laughs> how how old is Superman? And he said, oh, he's eternally in his late twenties. So I said, Okay, I can find you a star that's like 26, 27 light years away, and I can make sure it's red because there are plenty of red stars in the galaxy because the Krypton star right, is red. Right. And we, we can make that the star he came from. I can find an actual star. He said, yeah. So I, I went back yeah, to my but, cattle. But is there an exoplanet around that star that could actually be Krypton? Well, th th most stars will have exoplanets we knew at this time, so I wasn't worried about that. Okay. So I, I gave him a choice of two or three stars. Okay. Okay? And they said, we'll take this one. Well, I, I said, why? Oh, because it's in the constellation Corvus one of the 88 constellations of the night sky. Corvus is a crow. And I said, well, well why? He said, oh, the mascot of Smallville High is the crow. I said, oh. whoa, that's good. <laughs> whoa. So there it is. It's now Superman canon, this conversation. And so, yeah, they drew him, and then they called me back and said, do you mind if we have him meet you? And I said, yeah, let's do it, okay? So in this comic, I am meeting Superman. And there's a tender moment because he sees the destruction of Krypton and, and he's sad. He's crying super tears. Yes, he's just sad. And I never, I realized at that moment, I'd never seen Superman emotionally sad. Right. And angry, sure, but not, not just genuinely sad. Right. And so I know a little more than usual about how Superman got here mm. because of that conversation. So here's the takeaway, people. Neil deGrasse Tyson made Superman cry.